If you're only making the minimum payments on your debt, you're not just stuck. You're bleeding money on interest every single month. And the worst part is most people don't realize how much faster they could be debt free. I've helped dozens of people create custom debt payoff plans using spreadsheets just like the one we're going to build today. And using these exact same strategies, I was able to pay off over $100,000 of debt on two teacher salaries. And since then, I've made it a mission to help other people do the same. The problem is, when you're juggling multiple debts with different interest rates, it's hard to know where to start. You might feel overwhelmed, unsure how to organize it all, and which debt to pay off first. And without a clear plan, it's really easy to waste years paying off your debt and thousands of dollars on interest. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to build a step-by-step -step debt avalanche spreadsheet which targets the highest interest rate debts first. It'll help you pay off debt faster, save money on interest, and finally have a clear path to financial freedom. But if you feel like a total spreadsheet newbie and don't want to put in all the hassle of creating this yourself, check out the link below and I've got a customized debt snowball spreadsheet service where you send me your debt information and I build this spreadsheet for you in either Google Sheets or Excel. All right, let's dive in and build this debt avalanche spreadsheet from scratch using Microsoft Excel. So we've got our blank Excel spreadsheet here. Across the top of this spreadsheet, we're going to start putting in labels for each of our debts so we know the minimum payment, the interest rate, and the total debt owed. And because we're doing a debt avalanche spreadsheet, we're gonna order these from highest interest rate debt first to lowest interest rate debt last, ignoring the total balances on all of them. So on your spreadsheet, we're gonna start in column B and we're gonna write payment, interest, and I'm gonna write debt one. And instead of labeling debt one, debt two, debt three, you can just put in the names of the debts you have. So if it's a Capital One credit card, put Capital One. If it's a Chase credit card, put in Chase. Whatever your specific debts are, you can customize it and put in the names of those. For this video, I have five debts that we're gonna look at with varying interest rates, and I'm just going to label them as debt one through five. And I'm just gonna go from one debt right to the next, labeling all of these the same, um, minus the name of the debt. So I'm gonna put all five of these in. You can pause the video while you put yours in as well. Now that I've got my labels across the top, I'm going to enter in the specific information for each of those debts, the payment, the interest rate, and the total amount owed for those. All right, my first one, the minimum payment is $156. The interest rate is 27.24. The debt is 4,660.71. So you notice with that very first one, none of those marked as either dollar amounts or percents. So now we have to fix that. So I'm actually going to do all of these at the same time so that it saves me a little bit of time. And I am using a Mac, so I just um, use the command button and clicked on the letters at the top of these so it highlights the whole row. And I'm gonna format each of those columns to be money. So if I go up to format, I'm going to format the cells, or I suppose the column. Nope. I don't use Excel as much as I use Google Sheets, so sometimes it takes me just a moment to find the right buttons. Format the cells. They are currency, and I want them to show up just like that. We'll do two decimal places, we'll do a dollar symbol, and so now both of those ones that I entered in are dollars. I'm also going to center align them because I like a center alignment. I'm going to do the same thing with my interest rate columns, but for interest rate, we're going to obviously change it to percentage. So same thing, I'm going to select all of these that have interest rates, should be five, format the cells, and it's going to be a percentage to two decimal plates, places, and I noticed that it did this thing, um, it changed my 27.24 to 200, 2,724%. We don't want that, so we'll just rechange that back, and it should be formatted just fine. Now I'm gonna enter the rest of my information for my other four debts across the top. Now I have all of my debt information set up. I'm also going to center those because I just like the formatting of everything being centered and uniform. Uh, so you can see that the rest of those formatted just nicely with percents and dollar signs just like I want them to. The next step in setting up your debt avalanche spreadsheet in Excel is to have the dates along the left-hand side of your spreadsheet, and I format those to be the month and the year. So I'm making this right at the start of June, so I'm gonna write June 
20, 20, or 25, um, just like that. Um, and I honestly don't like the formatting of that. Um, but before we get to that, I'm going to add the next part, which is going to be a formula. So I like this to automatically calculate so I don't have to type in every single month and year. So I'm going to type in equals e date, and there's already a function there. I'm going to click the cell above it, and I'm going to type a comma, and then I'm going to type a one for to add one month to that. And you can see that it didn't really work because this isn't formatted as a date. We're going to fix that. We're going to highlight the whole column by clicking on the A at the top. Go up to format the cells, yep, the cells again. And we want that to be, should be a date. All right, it is a date and we kind of just have to select the date style we like. I like this one so it has the month and the year with it. And it should then do what I want it. So I'll change it from June 2025, we're going to center these again. Um, July 2025, so now that I have this formula in the cell, I should just be able to drag this down, grab that little square that's there, drag down, and it will just automatically change those for me, which is exactly what I want. So I'm just gonna drag that down a while. Um, even more, actually. Perfect, through October of 2035. Hopefully we don't need to go that far, but if we do, we've got that there. And if we need to drag that down further, we can always do that. The next part is a, another little bit of formatting that I like. If you notice right now, if you were to start scrolling down, you lose track of all your dead information at the top. Or if you scroll to the right, you lose track of your dates. I want those things to stay in place and we do that by freezing those cells. And to do that on Excel, we're gonna click in this cell here, that's B3. And from there, we're gonna click on View. And we're gonna come over here to Freeze Panes. That will freeze everything above that cell and everything to the left of it. So we'll freeze rows one and two and freeze column A. So now as I scroll down, my debts actually stay in place. If I scroll to the right, my dates stay in place, which is exactly what I want. I prefer to freeze the cells on my debt avalanche spreadsheets like this because it helps me always know what my debt information is, no matter how far down I have to scroll as I'm creating this and as I'm managing my debt payoff plan. Now we're ready to enter our formula so that our debt avalanche spreadsheet will automatically calculate our new total amount that we owe on our debt after we make our payment every single month. And the cool thing is we only have to enter this in one time and then we can copy it into the other columns. So we're gonna go into cell D3, we're gonna type equals. We're gonna do a left parenthesis. We're going to do, click on D2, so our total debt, because we don't need to type in, we can just click the column, or the cell. We're going to type in subtract the payment and now we're going to add in the interest rate. And to do that, we're gonna click the amount that we owe again, times that little asterisk, star, the interest rate. And then we're gonna take that number and divide it by 12 to get how much it would be adding back in every single month of interest. You hit enter. And you can see it automatically calculated that in. Now I should be able to take that formula, hit copy and now paste under each of these and it will format it so it is the correct cells. So now I have all of my formulas in. The next little step we have to do is take each of these, um, the payment in the interest, and drag it down so it is level with that. And this is where Excel differs a little bit from Google Sheets. You can see that my payment went up $1 and my interest rate went up 100%. I don't want that. You don't want that. So what we do for that is we are going to click on this autofill options that just automatically pops up and we're gonna copy cells so that it just repeats and duplicates those cells. So I'm gonna do that for each of these, drag them down so they're level, click the little drop down, copy cells. Now all of those debts are set up with the correct formulas and what we're gonna do now is we're going to, you can do this one at a time, you can do multiple at a time. I'm just gonna start with one at a time to illustrate how to do it, and then you can see how that process is done and repeat it for all of your debts. So I'm gonna highlight the payment, interest rate, and the total debt, click this little square, and drag it down, just like I did before. And, just like before, it is trying to like continue this series or fill the series, we want it to copy cells. So you can see now, that is going down every single month. I wanna drag this little square down until it is negative, which is right here and then we can format that. Actually, what we can do is we can 
do conditional formatting. So when our debt gets negative, it'll automatically turn green or a specific color. We're gonna click in this top left-hand corner here, and it should highlight the entire spreadsheet so that this conditional formatting will apply to every single cell in here. And specifically, when a number goes negative, we want it to change a specific color as a nice visual cue that that debt is now paid off, and we can start applying the payment to the next highest interest rate debt. So we're gonna, again, highlight the whole spreadsheet by clicking this top left-hand corner, format and conditional formatting. This brings us to this screen here. We are going to click the plus and the style. We're just going to click classic. And we want to format only cells that contain a cell value less than zero. And we are going to do a green fill with dark green text, just like that. It'll look like that if a value is less than zero. So now you can see that that's exactly what happened. That turned negative, and so it is now that green visual signifier for us. You don't have to do that. I like to do that. It helps me visualize my debt. Now we're going to do the same thing with our other four debts. I'm going to highlight the payment, interest, and the debt. As I start to drag it down, I just stop a little bit because I know I'm going to need to switch this to copy cells. And now I can continue that all the way down until this is paid off. And it automatically switched for us. I love it. We'll delete those. I'm going to do the same thing for the remaining three debts. You can pause this video and do this for all of your debts as well. And when we can see when each of our debts is paid off with just the minimum payment, we're going to apply the debt avalanche method next. Now, all of our debts are set up with a payoff date for each one of these debts that's gonna be highlighted in green. So let's check out when this person would be paid off with only making their own payments. That'd be October of 2032. Now we're gonna format that green. So I'm gonna click on home in Excel here. We're going to use this paint can and format that all of that green, just like that. October 2032 is when this debt will be paid off using only the minimum payments. Now we're gonna apply the principles of the debt avalanche method. When one debt gets paid off, we're gonna take the payment that was targeted towards that debt and now apply it to the debt with the highest interest rate first. That is going to be debt five here, it is 271.89 and we're gonna add that to this $156 for this debt one. So that's gonna take place in March of 2028 and this payment is now gonna become 427 and 89 cents. And we're going to drag that down and it is copying just like we want to. And you can see how much faster now this debt is getting paid off with that extra payment being applied. Now it's September 2028 instead of August of 2029. That's a year off. We're gonna delete all of that. And now we're going to apply this 427 to debt two, which is the next highest interest rate debt at 21.24. That makes this debt now 533.89, or the payment on this debt, 533.89. We're gonna apply that by dragging it down getting it paid off faster, applying this 533.89 to uh, this 132, drag it down like before, and this is where we're seeing a huge difference being made. And now we're just going to apply that 665 right here, and this will be paid off the next month. And there we go, we can see that the debt free date for this person is going to move from October of 2032 to November of 2039, cutting off about three years of debt repayment and putting $764 back in this person's budget every single month for three years. And that is powerful and that is life changing money back into this person's budget. So the debt avalanche method is clearly very powerful in paying off your debt faster than if you only made the minimum payments on all of your debts. But what makes the debt avalanche method even more powerful is when you start applying extra payments to your debts, starting with the highest interest rate debt first. And this is where a really good budget comes in handy because then you know exactly how much money you have left at the end of every month and how much you can apply towards this high interest rate debt. I'm gonna show you really quickly how you can add extra payments with your debt avalanche spreadsheet. 
If I'm targeting the highest interest rate debt first, that is this debt one here with a 27% interest rate, and if there's any month that I have extra money in my budget that I can apply towards this debt, all I need to do is come to this payment column and change this value. So if I had an extra $200, I can change this from 156 to 256. Okay, and that will automatically adjust down here. You can see this got paid off a month earlier now with that one extra payment. And if I can do that every single month and add that extra payment in, that is going to make a huge difference in how fast this debt gets paid off. Let's just look at that for a moment. So if I drag this down, we're cutting years off of our debt repayment. And one of the things that I provide my clients when I create a custom debt avalanche for them is a bonus tab on their debt avalanche spreadsheet that shows them what is possible if they're able to make extra payments every month instead of just the minimum payments. And then I will recreate their entire debt avalanche spreadsheet with that extra payment in mind to show them a new debt free date if they're to make extra payments instead of just following the minimum payments. My clients have found it to be really powerful and really motivating to see the options and just how much faster they can get out of debt when they make those extra payments and help you find your debt free date. You can actually learn more about that service and exactly what I do for clients in this next video where I walk through step by step how I make a custom Destiny Wall spreadsheet for clients and some of the bonuses that I offer with that service. It's the perfect next step if you're really serious about paying off your debt.